Hello, this is Mark Warren and I'm back with another vision improvement video and in this video I'm going to be talking about bad habits. I want to give you an update on my current progress. So for the past few weeks I've been working on my night vision and also still working on balancing out my eyes. Um, I've come a long way in balancing out my eyes. My astigmatism is getting much better in my left eye. It's almost clear now. Um, and it's very close to my right eye. So I've been working hard at that, trying to get those even and balanced out. So we're pretty close on that. And as far as my night vision, that has improved drastically as well. Um, the other night, my wife and I, we went to a restaurant to eat and the restaurant as a as a bar area and of course it's all dark you know most restaurants are dark like that so we were sitting there and I was able to clear up my vision in the dark environment which is something I have always struggled with but I'm starting to get better at that as well so my night vision um, working in low light environments things like that that has improved quite a bit as well my next eye appointment should be yearly uh, at the end of this month, beginning of November. Even if I'm not at 2020 by then, I'm still just going to keep doing what I'm doing because I'm seeing the improvement still every week. So even if it takes me a little longer than a year to get back to 2020, I'm fine with that. I don't think it'll take me like two years to do this because like I said, I'm very close. I'm, I'm getting more uh, flashes of clear vision without even thinking about it now so I know I'm on the verge of it just being permanent um, so uh, that will happen eventually here but I'm just going to enjoy the journey and I know I'm in this for the long game and I'm just going to take my time and let my vision heal itself so I'm going to try to keep this short but I just want to go through a list of bad habits and all of this really has to do with tunnel visioning tunnel visioning is what causes our vision to fail so the more you tunnel vision and the more you get stuck just seeing this and nothing out here that's when you're going to have issues with your vision the more you can keep your vision open seeing everything around and seeing movement between objects the easier it is so bad habits that will suck you into tunnel visioning first off reading and not moving your head and eyes together so if i read this piece of paper here and looking down at it and i'm just going to read like this top sentence back and forth you'll notice my eyes and head move together and this is the way i read now and one thing you'll also notice is my eyes when i turn my head my eyes tend to roll that way with the movements I'm not using any extra ocular muscles to do that. It's just automatic. So that's one thing I know that has gotten better with my vision. Now, I know a lot of people who have good vision, you don't see them moving their eyes and head together. But this is the one thing that keeps me focused on seeing movement in the background or movement in the peripherals when I move them together. And it keeps these eyes relaxed. Everything is super relaxed when you're doing it that way versus me using all of these muscles to do all the work just reading like that. It gets tiring after a while and now I can't even do it anymore because it just hurts too much. Move your head and eyes together as you read. Next bad habit, walking without looking at anything in particular. And this is basically another form of staring. For instance, if I'm walking out of my bedroom down the hall, I'm looking at the door handle specifically. I'm specifically got my eyes focused and fixed on the door handle and then I'm watching stuff in the peripheral as I walk by. Uh, once I get to the end of the hallway, I turn into my living room and I'm looking at a chair. I'm specifically looking at that and then watch stuff in my peripheral and then when I move or start going to the kitchen, I'll look at the bar, the end of the bar, countertop bar. And again, watching stuff in the peripheral as I round the corner from the bar to go into the kitchen, I'm looking at my sink. So I'm looking at very specific things. And I do this all the time, whether I'm inside or outside. I'm not just walking around in a daze. When you don't use your eyes to fix or focus on specific points, your eyes get lazy. It's another form of staring. And I found I had a habit of doing that all the time. So now when I walk around, I specifically try to look at objects or, or parts of objects. Watching TV or reading with your head against a headrest. And again, once again, if your head's back on a headrest and you're watching TV, 
you're going to get stuck into tunnel visioning again. So you want to make sure if you're going to be watching or reading or even using your computer, make sure your head is not stuck still. You want to be able to move your head and eyes together. Reading with your eyes down, but maybe your head up. So what I mean by this is um, one of the bad habits I used to have is I would, let's say there's a table here. I would put my arm on a table, my hand on my chin or on my jaw or something like that. And I would read like this, head propped up, eyes reading down. And that's just what I found to be comfortable at the time, but that actually causes lots of issues. This is how people develop astigmatism. What happens is you're reading like this at an angle and you're constantly using just your eye muscles and the eye muscles get tense in wherever it is, the angle that it is that you're looking at. So for me, it was tense up here. And I'm using all these muscles to try to read and not moving my head. So everything's tense, stressed, <laughs> and it's just a bad habit to get into. This causes also for pulls or reshaping of your cornea. When you get too much tension in your extraocular muscles, and I believe Bates talked about this, then it starts pulling and reshaping your cornea, and that's how you can end up with astigmatism. I also read a study some time ago talking about uh, violin players. Violin players, they're playing the violin, they've got their head or face on the chin rest, and they're playing like this, and usually they're reading music over here. So guess who used to play violin? <laughs> I did. I played violin from middle school through high school. So about seven to eight years I was playing violin. And I actually have an astigmatism in my left eye because this is how I used to read sheet music. This eye was doing a lot of work. This one was okay and it's my dominant eye, but this one was doing a lot of work. And my astigmatism is approximately about a, almost a 90 degree angle up. That's one of the things that probably contributed to my astigmatism. And then of course, reading like this on desk or working at a computer with my chin, those are other things that re, uh, contribute to astigmatism. So when you are reading, again, head and eyes move, make sure you're reading perpendicular to whatever it is you're reading. So if you're reading a computer screen, you wanna be reading flat. And if you get down to the bottom, that's fine, but don't let your eyes just go down to the bottom of the screen. Move your eyes and head down to the bottom of the screen. You want to try to stay as flat to whatever you're reading, keeping your eyes centered in the eye sockets and not do a lot of movements like that. Not getting enough daylight. There is something about daylight that keeps our eyes recharged and fresh. So even if you can't get outside every day, at least try to get to a window and look at stuff out the window with daylight. I found daylight helps tremendously. And if I spend a lot of time in the day, the night is better. So when things get dark, things like that, it's a lot easier. So spend time in daylight. And it's, again, it's not about really so much the distance, it's just sunlight, natural light is so much better for our eyes than artificial light. So that's pretty much all the bad habits. And of course you can elaborate on those and to other things that you do daily, but pretty much those are the basics. But there are some mental bad habits I also want to talk about as well. First mental bad habit, doubting you can improve your eyes. A lot of people will get into vision restoration and then they start doubting, oh, I don't think this is gonna work. Uh, this isn't gonna happen, it's not for me. If you doubt yourself that you can't fix your vision, guess what, you're not gonna fix your vision. You have to mentally tell yourself, there's nothing wrong with my eyes, all I need to do is learn how to use them. So get yourself in a mindset that you are going to fix your vision. And the more you can tell yourself that, the easier it is. Believing others that you can't fix your vision. Those are your optometrists or friends or whoever saying, no, you can't fix your vision. Once they degrade, then it's that's what you get. That's not true at all. I'm fixing my vision every day and I'm seeing crystal clear every day without glasses. So. Don't believe others. Do your own research and find out for yourself and just try things. What's it gonna hurt to look at stuff, move or notice movement or notice your peripheral? That's all I'm telling you to do. Being impatient about improving your eyes. This is something that's gonna take time and patience. 
you have to be patient through this. There are going to be days where you're going to have bad days where you can't seem to focus on anything. You're going to have days with double vision, um, some blur, but be in it for the long haul. And I know it can get quite frustrating that, okay, I saw a few moments of clarity here and now it's gone and now I can't get it back. Just keep doing with your, what you're doing and it will get better. Then there's those who just completely give up on improving your eyes. You know, they may have done it for two or three months or maybe even a year and they're like, I'm done. <laughs> well, guess what? Your eyes didn't get screwed up overnight and you're not gonna fix them overnight. So again, you have to be in this for the long game. It's gonna take time to reshape these muscles, to get them to work right, to fire right. And like I said, it's, you just have to sit back and enjoy the process. Just say, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this. It may take you a year, it may take you two. Um, if you're high myopia, it may take you even a little bit longer than that, but you have to constantly work at it. Finally, I just wanna say a note of I can't improve your eyes for you. All I can do is provide you the information and the things that I did to improve my eyes. It is up to you to have the mental motivation to improve your situation. I get a lot of emails or comments or things like that saying, hey, I have this, is this gonna work for me? <laughs> well, if you ask me a question like that, I'm gonna tell you no, because one, I already know you're doubting you don't have the mental mindset to do this and you're not gonna put forth the work. So if you're gonna ask me a question like that, I'm gonna tell you no. But for those who really want it, they're gonna go out there and do it. And there are those out there doing it. There are people telling me their progress, you know, all the time that their vision's improving just by changing these few little things. So you have to put forth the work. I can't do it for you. There's no magic button. You can't do it for 10 minutes and think that's it. You can't call the stuff that I do exercises or drills. No, they're habit changes. And I make myself do these habits every single day. And I'm seeing improvement every day as are many other people who've started doing the same thing. So if you wanna fix your vision, you have to do the work. Hope you've enjoyed this video and given you some things to think about. This is Mark Warren and we'll catch you on the next one.